This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. So most of you are probably familiar with the uh, uh, media kind of uncritically catching on to the publication of the Sponsius, Sponsianus gold coin as a, a legitimate coin earlier this year. Uh, and uh, so the subject of today's lecture is uh, that coin and kind of reasserting that it's a 17th century uh, subject and looking at it in its bigger context. And this will be presented by Alexandra Bursha and Carol Misgen. Um, professor Bursha is a professor of archaeology at the University of Warsaw and studies Roman coins uh, and coin finds, um, primarily from the Barbaricum outside of the uh, borders of what was the Roman Empire. And uh, Kirill Misgen, many of you have probably seen on our long table several weeks ago when he spoke about uh, coin finds. Uh, he is a scientific adjunct in the Faculty of Archaeology at the University of Warsaw. Um, and he studies ancient coins from the territory of the Central and uh, of Central and Eastern Europe and uh, archaeology of the late Roman and Great Migration period in the same region. Uh, so with that, uh, Professor Borsha and Carol, please take it away. Okay, thank you, Nathan, for kind introduction. Do you hear me well? Oh, I hope so. That's right. Uh, a few months before the 16th International Numismatic Congress last September, I recite from my colleague in Glasgow, a draft on an article intended for publication in the highly ranked open access journal PLOS One concerning the alleged Roman Emperor Sponsianus, not mentioned in any ancient sources. During the Congress, the two of us went out to lunch with one of the authors and gave him our critical opinion. This I could do, uh, having uh, inspected the gold of Sponsianus in several European collections 30 years ago, doing research on my Humboldt Fellowship to write a habilitation thesis on finds of Roman gold medallions and their imitation from the barbaric. A few days before the publication date, I recite almost the same text with a request request for a last minute peer review. I return a very negative evaluation of its methodology and conclusions. One day before uh, the date of publication of the journal Plus One, I was told that in this situation, the text would not appear. And then to my utter astonishment, it was published. Apparently, for Professor Pearson, the prime mover and lead author of the text, this was to be a promotion event for his book on military emperors. Well, promotion was a major success. The text was read online by 24,000 viewers. The exact number of views on social media, daily press, for example, the Times, the CNN, television broadcasts, such as BBC and online platforms is hard to estimate, but without those several million viewers. At first, we both were unsure how to rea react, Hero and I. We decided that for any professional numismatist, the matter is obvious and makes no sense to publish a formal polemic, a sheer waste of time. We concluded that the best and fully adequate solution is to publish a joint statement in the most popular internet weekly coins weekly and on the web page of the European Project Ancient Coins Counterfeit Scientific Network. We presented the key counter arguments. Recently, Johan van Hess did the same. He published in the June issue of the numismatic journal De Beldena a brief, somewhat sarcastic text under the title Sponsianus, to be or not to be, that is the question. But still we recite a great many questions from professional numismatists, and they ask us in particular the subject of barbarian imitation. 
In the end, we decided to write a text to present the intellectual atmosphere of the age, 16th to 18th century, the realities of antiquarian interest when the gold of Sponsianus was a pretty common phenomenon. And we decided to clear up several obvious misconceptions spread by the text published on PLOS One. Our new LA is now uh, Bartos Avianovich of the Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun, who recently joined our team. Before we begin, a few words of explanation for those who might be unfamiliar with the subject. Last November, a text written by five authors was published in the mega journal Plus One entitled Authenticating Coins of the Roman Emperor Sponsian. Only one of these authors is a numismatist. The other four specialize in the natural and experimental sciences. Their experience with coins is limited apparently to the analysis of specimens in the Hunterian collection in Glasgow, with a particular focus on the Sponsian pieces and the medals of Gordian and Philip. Our only record of the provenance of a group of gold pieces with the legend Sponsianus is a handwritten note made in a journal under the year 1713 by Carl Gustav Pereus, Swedish antiquarian and numismatist, instrumental for establishing the Vienna coin cabinet during the reign of the Emperor Charles VI. His entry reads as follows. In Martio sind von dem Hofkammer Radpalm acht zugleich in Siebenburgen gefunden Güldene Medaillon ins Kaiserische Kabinett kommen. Als ein falscher Medaillon von Kaiser Gordiano Pio, zwei gleiche Konsulare, sechs Familie Plautia, zwei Philipp Imperial gleich, zwei gleichen Reverses, aber differenten Gepäcktes mit zwei Konsulares Augurini, ex Familie Minutia, mit der Säule, ein schöne Medaille Alexandrina. These specimens were traced in the Vienna Coin Cabinet by Rudolf Minsterberg and published in a brief contribution in the Blätter für Freude in 1923. This contribution tends to be overlooked almost completely, perhaps before, because it is written in German language. Today, the same pieces are still in Vienna. The two gold Plautius coins are identified as type A, the Gordian piece weighs 22.73 gram. The two Philip issues 10.66 gram and 10.95 gram, respectively. The two Sponsian specimens 10.7 and 9.38 gram. The stutter of the Alexander the Great cannot be determined convincingly. Close analogies were identified in several state and private collection acquisition of the 18th and 19th century. This collection include the Hunter Con Cabinet in Glasgow, Cabinet de Medaille in Paris, the Royal Collection of Coins and Medals in National Museum of Denmark, the Cabinet in Gotha, the Brukenthal Museum in Sibiu in Romania, and the Coin Cabinet of Horzogenburg Monastery, 60 km to the west of Vienna. In his uh, Catalogus Musei Cesarei Vindobonensis Numorum Veterum, uh, published in Vienna, Josef uh, Eckel treated the Sponsian pieces as barbarian imitations on a pair, on a par with Celtic coins. He included also the analyzed specimens of Gordian Philip and Sponsianus in his Doctrina Numorum Veterum, uh, probably because he was greatly impressed by the discovery of the hoard of gold medallions and the imitation at Sila di Somlo, now similar to Silvania in northwestern Transylvania. However, more on the subject later. The gold pieces of Gordian Philip and Sponsianus were dismissed as obvious modern forgeries back in the day by Henry Cohen and Rudolf Minsterberg. The latter presented an in-depth argument. Additional reasons were given by Bursa in 1998 in his habilitation thesis on finds of gold medallions from Barbary. The authors of the publication in PLOS One 
made a detailed investigation, including LM and SIM imaging and spectroscopy of the coins in the Hunterian collection in Glasgow. They reached the following conclusion. Uh, firstly, the weird marks identified on the Sponsianus Gordion and Philips specimens are deep and visible under the microscope. They are ostensibly evidence of an extended circulation. The weir is similar to the extensive circulation weir observed on 19th century coins in the Hunterian collection, selected for the prolonged historically documented circulation. Second, minerals identified on the surface of the investigated specimens confirm ostensibly that for some time they remain buried in the ground. The same minerals were identified on a number of first century gold coins from the Hunterian collection investigated for the sake of comparison. And third, the medals of Sponsian, Gordian and Philip pieces were cast from inferior quality gold. The third point is legitimate that these pieces were cast is what any moderately experienced numismatist can see with their naked eye without microscope. Except that, like the inferior quality of the gold, this proves that these specimens are not ancient coins. So much for the piece of scholarship based on the results obtained by using analytical techniques. The authors argue that the evidence obtained proves that the medals had been buried, so deposited in Transylvania in a hall, but before that, they had been circulated in antiquity. In other words, the result of the analytical techniques confirm the authenticity of the coins of Sponsianus, ephemeral military emperor from Transylvania on the border between provinces of Dacia and the Barbaria. However, the authors of the contribution to PLOS One leave the readers and themselves without an answer to at least two key questions. Firstly, what is the dating of the weir on the specimens subjected to analysis? Perhaps this weir developed during an extended stay in a private collection made worse by regular inspections in the 18th and 19th century, the time before the introduction of modern standards of handling on handling coins and other numismatic objects. After all, these specimens were a major attraction since 1713. And secondly, why in order to compare the medals found on the surface, did the researcher use gold coins from the same collection, coins without data about their provenance, find spot, and time of discovery. Doesn't the presence of the same minerals only confirm the extended stay of these coins in the same collection, the same display cases, exposed to the same environment, the same dust? Why was the comparison not made using well provenance gold coins from outside the Hunterian collection, coins with a known provenance, time spot, and time of discovery. We can think of a few more other questions that the author have left without an answer. As mentioned earlier, we presented most of the substantive counter arguments in the Coin Weekly and the on web page of the Ancient Coins Counter Files. Recently, Matt Hoys, Heil, did the same in his scholarly contribution, Sponsianus Anatomy einer Sensation, published in uh, Zeitschrift Papyrologie und Epigraphie. We fully agree with his arguments, so no need to repeat them here. However, not being an authority on the subject, Matt Hoys Heil did not go deeper into the subject of Barbaros imitation, the field on special interest for us here in Warsaw. We think this gives us leave to spell out the reasons why the pieces of Sponsianus, just like and Gordian and the Philip, are not barbarian imitation. So here we go. Gold 
barbarian imitation of the second half of the first century. First, were struck, not cast. Second, they never weighed more than 8.3 grams. Third, they were made of good quality gold, more than 95%. And fourth, most of them were pierced and starting from the late first century often fitted with a loop. Well, the Sponsianos, the Gorian, and the Philip pieces now in the Hunterian collection have none of these four characteristics. And there is more. Barbarian imitation never combine attributes of Republican and Imperial coinage. Reason enough to banish the Hunterian specimens from the group of barbarian imitation for good. Moving uh, on the obverse and reverse of Sponsianus Medai, there is more than one technical flaw. This was pointed out by Alice Sharpless in a contribution published last November on INS webpage. Uh, first, they are double impression, probably caused from the mode, sleeping while taking the impression. Also, the final eye in the Sponsiani may actually be, quote, a lingering imprint of the second vertical bar of the M, unquote. Uh, but the list goes on. On the reverse, they may be further more obvious double impression. Two overlapping cycles of bidding ring, and at 11 o'clock, the letter C uh, impressed over the figure head, and another C impressed over the letter A. Well, double strike to, uh, to appear on some ancient coins, but never on gold coins, not on barbarian imitation, not on official Roman coins. But before discussing the problem of the coins manufacture, let us focus on the four other less investigated topics. First, the name Sponsianus, second, Coins, medals, and the term medai in the 15th, 16th, and 17th century, the age of antiquarian interest. Third, the Transylvanian provenance of the 1713 horde. And fourth, the prototype and the manufacture of the Sponsianus medai. The authors of the text publishing Plus One make the claim that the name Sponsianus is seen for the first time in 1713 on medals of the early modern age before any Roman inscription with the name had been published. This is the first unforgivable lapse, ignoring the sources at hand. In fact, the inscription discovered in vineyard of the Cardinal Carpensis, which reads Eros Sposianus, Livia Physician, has a rich publication history started in 16th century. It was published by prominent and much quoted scholars, Levinus Torrentius, the Bishop of Antwerp, Paulus Manutius, and in particular, the famous Fulvio Ursini. Let us note in this context that in his work published in 1570, Fulvio Ursini has illustration of coins with patterns that are remarkably similar to the obverse of the Sponsianus piece, especially the schematic Corona Radiata and the position of the legend Polio. Then there is an inscription with the name Nicodemus Sponsian, known in the 16th century from Via Appia, dated to the times of Augustus. Thus, contrary to what is claimed, the name Sponsian was well known to the literati and the antiquarians before 1713. What is more, in all of the inscriptions known today, the name Sponsianus appears only in the context of the first quarter of the first century AD. Uh, second, in the age of the antiquarian interest, the approach to coin collecting was completely different from what it is today. Authentic ancient coins were valued by collectors on a par with Renaissance medals, 
modeled on classical motifs and on a par with modern age copies, many of them in gold with invented legends and images. All were described as medai in Italian medaglia. Possibly the most comprehensive explanation of the term medai, the French medai, is given in the introduction uh, to his many works by Charles Patin, physician and tonismatist, and in more academic language in 19th century by Ernest Babelon. Today, the closest counterpart of the word medai is probably nonismatic object. In 16th and 17th century, the fabricated specimens, today we would call them now forgeries, appear together with copies of ancient games in great numbers at early modern collection and in many publications of that age. This huge mess was cleaned up only in the late 18th century, mostly by Josef Eckel in his Doctrina Nomorum Veterum. To get a better feel uh, of the climate of the age that could have produced the medaille with the name of Sponsianus, here is a highly instructive passage from a discourse of metal, ancient and modern, published by John Evelyn in London in 1697. Now, quote, one is perpetually in danger of being deceived and imposed on by cheap falsaries and mercenary forms. I do not mean our ordinary coiners of false money by mixtures of or alchemical sophistication only, but by such as make a common trade of imposing upon the unexperienced in this particular of medals. Uh, upon which occasion I may not pass the extravagant piece of forgery related by Dr. Barnett, now Lord Bishop of Salisbury, in his travels through Germany. At the siege of Bonn, cleaning the ground to plant a battery, was found in a vault, a cart full of medals of gold to the value of uh, 100,000 crowns, so big and ponderous as one of them weighted a hundred dollars of the finest to cut gold, bearing impression of Roman medals, but done uh, so coercively as everybody pronounced them counterfeits. Those which seemed truest were Greek medals. It, uh, it is the doctor reflection what should induce a man to make a forgery upon such precious metal in so vast a quantity and then to bury them underground. Evelyn then mentions various examples of forgeries designed to cheat the collector, filling in gaps in the genuine series of Roman coins, supplying a fantasy version of coin of Julius Caesar with Veni Vidi Viti, Vici, and so on. But back to John Evelyn, again quote. To return to Roman again, cantified are Gordianus of Africa, Pestenius or Maximus, Maximus of gold, all ancient medals of gold, Greek or Roman, that are not of the very best alloy, are to be counted impostors, excepting some since Alexander Severus and a few old Gothic and Punic. To these as such, uh, he means four girls, as borrow the head of the emperor with some fantastic reverse or enigmatical inscription, which shows no relation to the person or uh, seeming to historize some new and extravagant thing never heard nor read of in any good author before. Such also at present as tedious inscription without abbreviations. Uh, these are generally to be suspected, and such we frequently encounter in medals of the lower empire, and about the dominion of the 30 tyrants agreeable enough to the disorder and confusion of those times. And accordingly, they now and then struck some new and strange head 
to an old reverse we had no manner of relation to it." End of quotation. Let us note the date of the siege of Bonn in the autumn of 1673. Is it too outrageous today to identify our Sponsianus Gordian and Philip Medai with the deposit of early modern gonophoguries and propose that fantasy Transylvanian provenance was invented at the time of the acquisition by the Vienna coin cabinet in the early 18th century? So now moving to the fantasy provenance. Third, so how to explain the note my, made by Carl Gustav Herus in his journal, Provenancing Eight Medal acquired that year, so 1713, by the Vienna collection to Transylvania. Uh, let us recall that according to Roman authors, when Emperor Trajan defeated the Dutch and King Decebalus in the year 106, he seized huge plunder hidden under the riverbed of Sargetia and in some nearby caves close to San Misegetusa in Transylvania, five million pounds of gold, so around 60, 1650 tons, and 10 million pounds of silver around uh, uh, 3,300 uh, tons. These figures are exaggerated for certain, but the capture of such plunder is confirmed by scenes of Trajan column and by resources the emperor apparently had on hand for his ambition projects such as Trajan Forum. But this is not the end of the story about treasures from Transylvania. In 1543, a local peasant, Olaš Miklos, found a huge quantity of gold in the riverbed of the Sargetia near the ruins of Sarmizagetusa. Wolfgang Latius, the card physician and historian of Emperor Ferdinand, was the first to describe this gold. He reported 400,000 gold coins of Lysimachus, gold and silver plate, and a gold head of uh, Dacian Draco, probably from the military standard of the Zebalus. This treasure, unfortunately, was dispersed. Some of it smuggled to Moldavia, while the bulk passed to the uh, illustrious uh, Cardinal Jura Istinovich Matrinusevich, who in Latin, Georgius Martinusius. It was an important element of his assessed until his death in 1551. And its whereabouts today are unknown. Uh, probably in this case also, the number of the gold coin was exaggerated. Nevertheless, news about the treasure discovered in 1543 spread far and wide and were published more than once in 17th century literature. Recently, the treasure was discussed extensively and competently by Janos Mekke. Sadly, his contribution is available only in Hungarian, but currently with the Google Translator, this is not a problem, of course. <clears throat> Could it be that the story of the Trajan splendor in Dacia on the fault discovered in 1543 in Transylvania, widely published, inspired the invention of the provenance of eight medai obtained by Hereus in 1713 for the coin cabinet in Vienna. Early into the 18th century, such a provenance was particularly easy to credit. Eckel II, Joseph Eckel II, was folded and recognized the gold Sponsianus pieces as a barbarian imitative coins. In this, he was won over additionally by the recent discovery of the hall of gold medallions and imitation and Shilaki Shomilo, so now Simleo Silvaniei, in the northwestern Transylvania. Even if the appearance of these imitations is fundamentally different from the early modern medal of Sponsianus. So, and now, 
the first, uh, first point, uh, our claim is this, the schematized obverse portrait, the position of lettering of incomplete legend, all identifies the sort of inspiration for the obverse of the Sponsianus. Lithographic prints, illustrations of medai found in catalogues published or in manuscript, and books on history illustrated with medais. Starting from the 16th uh, century, there were plenty of them around with a special peak yet to come in the 17th century. Actually, a very good illustration of this can be found in the drawings from the Numismata Timeli Cesare Regi Austriaci Vindobonensis. Here also was published an uh, image of the so-called Gordian coin uh, from uh, Vienna collection. The style in which many of the coins are depicted is not worth it. A very characteristic example is a provincial issue of Valerian, uh, bronze Valerian coin minted in uh, theory. It can be seen that on the obverse, on the right side, right side of the legend uh, or, uh, is uh, preserved. All this is very similar to the style of the obverse of the Sponsian coins. As to the method, uh, method to manufacture. Uh, the Belgian numismatist mentioned early, uh, Johann van Heij, suggested uh, lost wax casting. We are agree with him. This was done probably by impressing in the wax the two sides of a Republican denarius of Minuntius Augurinus. This is suggested by identical bearded reams on the overs and the rivers. Next, the wax cast of the overs was re-engraved and made over into so-called portrait of Sponsianos and with a so-called uh, uh, legend. The next step was casting elite patricks using the lost wax method. The obtaining lead model could be used to make many new molds, matrices, matrices to make cast gold pieces. Coins cast uh, using this method will have on their edge a casting theme. On the ancient coin, uh, cast coins, it is almost always visible, not on the Sponsian, Sponsianus coins, however. Uh, Van Hesch suggested that there will be no casting scene where the clay mold was first filled with wax, then later with molten metal. And that is not matter in which point the slippage occurred, creating the double impressions when the wax models were made or when the lead models were impressed in the clay mold molds. What matters is that this technology absolutely fully corresponds to modern technologies and to modern forgeries rather than to the ancient official or barbarian minting. In summary, let us stress once again, the Roman Emperor Sponsianus never existed and medals with his name are modern forgeries produced in the same workshop, probably in the seventh century. And then we take this opportunity to uh, thank Gidela Bedier uh, from, of the University College London and Bartosz Avianowicz of the Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun, Poland, for consultations offered to assist this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, I'm not sure if Nathan's still here, but I, I can handle it. Um, does anyone have any questions? You can put it in the chat, raise your hand, or just unmute yourself. Come on, this is the biggest crowd we've had in months. Someone's got to have a question.
perhaps all is clear. <laughs> I guess. No, I, I think it was very thorough and very clear. Uh, maybe one question. Um, I mean, for, for, for people who publish uh, scientifically on numismatics, um, maybe, maybe you can tell us why it's so important from the perspective of history to rebut these kinds of claims and point out these flawed kind of methodologies. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, I can say that uh, uh, we ask uh, our uh, colleague from the chemistry department, uh, uh, who we cooperated since uh, 10 years uh, together. Uh, she was very busy in recent months, but she promised that he will also help us uh, to answer for some methodology uh, of the scientific methods yeah, uh, used in this text, because we we can only uh, I will react that the, the for instance the uh, coins used for comparison is not correct, yeah, but we cannot uh, 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 really uh, react and uh, on on uh, 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 explaining uh, uh, the reasons. Uh, uh, or, the, or the results of this uh, uh, scientific investigation. So that's uh, it's, it's for us. It's rather uh, very difficult. Thank you. Uh, there are some uh, questions coming in the chat. Uh, I would, of course, encourage people to feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, but let's see. Um, One question is, is are the wear and in, in, incrustations also consistent with cast pieces? Uh, actually, uh, actually, we are uh, wear, uh, it's very easily faked. It's, it's from the, from the uh, we know it from the Padunia, Paduan uh, uh, coins. Is it? Yeah, so, so it's, 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 it's not a big, uh, not a big problem. <laughs> no. And uh, and for for cast uh, for cast pieces as well, yeah. and now and, and we, we know it's also also from some some uh, modern uh, contemporary uh, Bulgarian uh, Bulgarian cast uh, cast pieces. It's it's really yeah. uh, another another question is uh, how many examples of the pieces are known and are photographs of available of those other examples? Uh, well, Alec, uh, uh, answer, it's... Uh, uh, well, I can answer, of course, yeah. But it's practically, uh, uh, well, I, and it's the question whether we are talking about all this group of metals or only uh, the Sponsianus. Uh, the Sponsianus is, uh, 11 uh, from uh, the museums we have mentioned. So there are uh, two in Vienna, one uh, two, two, two in Paris, and one in uh, one in uh, each other of the museums we have mentioned. Yeah? And uh, uh, there are uh, also more of this uh, uh, Gordian and uh, Philip medals. Uh, in the, uh, the several uh, collections, but what is interested, interesting uh, enough that uh, the weight are very different. So uh, the, the, the Gordian uh, has uh, more than uh, 22 gram and uh, the lower weight uh, of the uh, uh, Sponsian is something around uh, nine gram. So it's always more than a uh, uh, barbarian uh, imitation. So altogether, they are around uh, 20 pieces in uh, seven collections in the world. Okay. Um, we have some uh, compliments for your excellent and clear presentation in the chat. Uh, 
We also have one that says we're intimidated by so much uh, knowledge about a fascinating topic, but one on which most of us know nothing. Uh, it was indeed a very thorough uh, rebuttal. Thank you. Um, and then we have a question. What is the purity of the gold in the Sponsianus medallions? Oh, well, I I'm, I'm don't remember exactly, but it's it's very low. It's it's a, it's around uh, 70 uh, or uh, 70 percent. Hmm? Alec? Hmm? No, it's a bit more. It's a bit different. It's a bit it's a bit different between this uh, uh, Sponsian and Gordian, but it's uh, around uh, 1991. So yeah, it's really uh, yeah. So it's but it's uh, still not the same as uh, in uh, the uh, array or medallions of the period, yeah. which is uh, always more than 95. Yeah. No. We have another question. Um, why would a modern forger create a coin of an imaginary emperor? There would be no pre-existing market among collectors for such a piece. Could you speculate on the motivation of the forger? Well, good question. But <laughs> I like your start. Start. Yes, I think so. Well, uh, there there was a market. There was uh, a very great market for uh, for the. Uh, we know it uh, uh, from the many collections of, of 16th, 17th century, how many uh, pieces uh, of it, how many so-called medallions are a complete fantasy. Yeah? And they are quotation uh, legend inscription, the quotation of, uh, from the classical literature or something. And they and it's uh, uh, the, the people in this period, the antiquarians, uh, they, most of them, well, uh, uh, perhaps uh, not Charles Patin, but, but many others, usually they cannot find any difference between the original uh, ancient, so Greco Roman uh, coin and the uh, medals, uh, medal. Uh, done by Forger, uh, as Forger is uh, in the 16th, 17th century. So the, the real difference uh, start from the period of Eccel. So that is the, the, the border uh, when the people and the, the, the collectors start to select, select their collections according, uh, according uh, uh, Eccel. Before Echo, it was a really a great mass. Uh, it looks like Richard Schaefer has a question. I just I just have a comment about the collector interest in these uh, in various forgeries. I remember when I first opened the uh, four volumes, three or four, I forget which, of Baron Dai, uh, when he wrote a. a uh, a catalog for the coins he eventually donated to the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. The first volume consisted of almost entirely fake coins, just coins made up from history. That's almost the whole volume, and I, I couldn't believe it at first. Now, he, uh, he uh, this was published in 1864. So in the, uh, at least the first part of the uh, 1800s, collector interest in uh, was very active and they really didn't uh, take the time to find out if the coins were authentic or not. Baron Dailly spent evidently a lot of money and he collected uh, an amazing array of uh, Roman Republican fantasies, all taken from historical sources, like when you found the name Sponsian on that inscription. So it was a very active industry, and collectors were always ready to buy something new. We have more questions yeah. in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.
Yeah, thanks a lot. It's yeah, it's it's. Uh, I know very much more such examples, and it's going not only about uh, the coins, but it's the same with the games. You know, from this period, 16th, 17th century, uh, we know much more uh, uh, copies or forgeries of games than the authentic games in collections. <laughs> mm. We have one uh, one more question in the chat. Uh, do you assume the other types of the Spansianus group, Gordon, Gordon, Philip, Plautius, were made in the same technique? From this time, I'm not. I I didn't know. I don't know any any uh, any uh, uh, other types. No, there is only these two types. So they're, yeah. they're yeah. like the sponsion. So they are the identical, yeah. practically identical, identical types uh, in all the collection. There is no other. But as I say, they have a, uh, sometimes a very different uh, uh, weight. Uh, so difference of, of six, seven grams between one and the yeah. other one. 